dear event participants, ladies and gentlemen. Our site event is taking place at a very important moment in our global history. The world is fighting an unprecedented crisis that has actually set up the Sustainable de Development Goals a few steps back. Uh, regional economic integration as an important driver of sustainable and inclusive economic growth for the member states provides countries with additional opportunities to make significant progress in the implementation of the United Nations agenda for the achieving sustainable development goals. I thank the representatives of regional associations and international organizations for joining the discussion. And I propose to exchange the experience of our regions for the sake of our common cause, achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. As the organizer of the round table, I would like to start by sharing some of the developments in these fields in the Eurasian Economic Union. My colleagues from the Eurasian Economic Commission will then briefly supplement my speech with their presentations so that uh, everyone has a comprehensive picture of our approaches to this important topic. First of all, I would like to note that Eurasian Economic Union was the first among the regional economic integration organizations to analyze the relationships between the depths of integration progress, uh, between depths of integration and progress made in the implementations of the sustainable development goals. The second point of uh, our assessments uh, was uh, uh, towards the achievement of the agenda 2030 was the report indicators of the achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals in the Eurasian Economic Union region, prepared by our Commission and presented at high level political forum in uh, 2017. Based on the results of the work carried out, we concluded that integration process has have a positive effect on the growth, growth of the Sustainable Development Goals indicators. Moreover, the achievements of the SDG by the Eurasian Union countries is more effective in those areas of the economy that are subject to supranational regulatory measures. So the more integration we have, the more progress in the achievement of uh, Sustainable develop, Development uh, Goals. Our Commission uh, uh, developed uh, and released a statistical brochure achieving sustainable development goals in the Eurasian Economic Union region in the year 2019. We are constantly working on increasing the number of indicators that can be calculated in our framework. Uh, taking into account the best international practices, we are working on the convergence of the approaches for the collection and calculations of the relevant SDG indicators in our countries, as well as we are exploring the possibility of analyzing additional indicators to access the impact of integration process on the progress in SDGs. At the same time, as we have seen in the, on the international scale, even the, uh, within the framework of the United Nations monitoring system, uh, the approaches used uh, are not ideal. In particular, many of indicators used to measure the progress towards the sustainable development goals need to be revised or specified. The, existence, the existing indicators require adjustment. For example, the indicator of the number of bankomats uh, and bank branches per 100,000 adults does it reflect the true level of access to modern financial system given the development of remote payments, digital technologies, and the abandonment of the... The number of such kind of indicators which we have to revise and to adjust modern requirements is uh, rather large. Uh, also, the methodology for calculating the number of other indicators is questionable and needs a scientific background and verification. Uh, the Eurasian Economic Commission is ready to engage actively in the relevant work at the United Nations platforms and proposed approaches based on economical and mathematical models of the sustainable development process. 
Actually, the original is actually implementing the directions for the development of Eurasian economic integration until the year 2025, which uh, uh, was adopted by the heads of the states uh, last year. Most of the measures and mechanisms included in the strategy will bring the, the member states closer to the implementations of the agenda in the field of uh, SDG uh, to the year 2030. In addition to the traditional issues of further development uh, of trade and economic integration, uh, primarily related in uh, sustainable develop development goals number seven, eight, and nine, the strategy pays special attention to social development issues closely related, uh, related to SDGs number one, two, three, four, and 10. Uh, the document provides uh, for expansions of cooperation in education, science, healthcare, tourism, and sports, uh, in order to ensure the availability of achievements in these areas for the citizens of our union. Uh, currently, we are act actually working towards achieving goal 13, uh, combat combating uh, climate change. The Commission came up with the initiatives to harmonize the regulation uh, of greenhouse gas emission, environmental payment system, and to form, it, to, to form a climate data bank expertise and projects. This proposal is part of the measures uh, enlisted in the strategy, which I mentioned uh, above, uh, strategy 2025, in the field of supporting the implementation of the principles of a green economy and sustainable development in Eurasian Union. Uh, given the wide range of participants in our round table, uh, I have to mention the importance of international cooperation in achieving the sustainable development goals. This is directly related to the goal 17. Our union already has a wide network of partnerships with the key integration structures. It includes the Commonwealth of Independent States, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, ASEAN, the African Union, the Pacific Alliance, Mercosur, the Indian Community, the Latin American Economic System, the Secretariat of Integration in the Central America. I see some of the representatives uh, uh, high top officials of this organization on our screen. And uh, I uh, very glad to, uh, to thank you for the participation in uh, our event. In conclusion, I note that it is important to continue development a methodology that would identify the factors determining progress in achieving the sustainable development goals. The research in this field is very important and would give and new opportunities and instruments in achieving those goals. In addition, the issue of, of assistance, uh, of assessing the interconnection between implementation of uh, sustainable development goals and the depth of integration process, while uh, going to the new technological order, remains relevant. Uh, our work in this area will make it possible to build a more targeted policy in terms of ensuring sustainable growth of the Eurasian economic member states and in the world as general. Thank you for the attention. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Minister, for your speech. Uh, indeed, the collective engagement uh, on uh, issues of our common interest, uh, such as the achievement uh, uh, the Agenda 2030 on the SDGs has proven to be crucial, especially uh, our days. Now we will now continue elaborating uh, on the Eurasian Economic Union's uh, approaches towards the achievement of the SDGs. And uh, I would like to pass uh, the floor to the Deputy Director of the Statistics Department, uh, Natalia Ignatova, who will share with us the experience of the Union on monitoring the uh, SDG indicators on both uh, national and uh, EIU level, as well as what further steps are planned in this direction. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Ms. Natalia, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Gora. Thank you so much. I'm trying to share my presentation. I hope it works. Mm -hmm. Can you see? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to give you a brief a uh, brief breakdown of the Eurasian Economic Commission experience on tracking progress towards the sustainable development goals in the Eurasian Economic Union region. As you are all aware, the implementation of the SDGs is carried out at the different levels. First of all, 
at the global level. You know, every year the UN Secretary General presents the global report, which provides a global overview of the current situation of the achievement of the SDGs based on the latest available data on indicators in the global indicator framework. Since the global report give us a very global picture, mainly describing the situation as a whole or for some parts or regions of the world, countries asked the UN regional commissions to show the progress made by them at the regions. Since then, the five UN regional commissions have developed their own platforms to show the implementation of the SDGs by their member states. I must say, uh, that other international organizations couldn't stand aside from the 2030 agenda. Therefore, some of them, such as the Eurostat and the OECD and others, have also developed their set of indicators and regional platforms to track progress towards the SDGs in their regions. The Eurasian Economic Commission, uh, Union is also committed to the 2030 agenda, and more on this on the next slide. Nevertheless, Countries play the main role in the SDG implementations. It is important to note that the Eurasian Economic Union member states from the very beginning got involved in this process. Nowadays, at their national levels, they have already implemented the indicators from the global indicator framework, established their national indicator sets, developed their national reporting platforms, and already submitted their first and some of them the second voluntary national review to the high level political forum on sustainable development. The voluntary national reviews aim to facilitate the sharing of experience by governments, including uh, successes, challenges, and lessons learned in implementing the 2030 Agenda. They also seek to strengthen policies and mobilize support and partnerships for their goals. So far, more than 100 countries have presented their efforts to advance the 2030 Agenda, and we are very glad that our member states among them. With regard to Eurasian Economic Union implementation of the SDGs, it must be noted that the Eurasian Economic Union Treaty and the fundamental documents constituting the law of the Eurasian Economic Union cover all 17 sustainable development goals and 108 targets. Therefore, in, nine, in 2017, the Eurasian Economic Commission presented its first report on progress towards the SDGs at the high level political forum on sustainable development. The report analyzed the compliance of Eurasian Economic Union development pri uh, priorities and activities via the sustainable development goals and targets. The report includes 59 indicators for nine goals for the Eurasian Economic Union as a whole. A large number of indicators cover the goal one, new poverty, and goal nine, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. Meanwhile, data, data were missing for eight targets, mainly from the environmental area. It should be noted that while the report was being prepared, the global indicator framework have just been agreed and some indicators didn't have their own custodian agents or even internationally approved methodology. Therefore, proxy indicators were selected for the report that are relevant to the Union. The Eurasian Economic Commission continued working on monitoring the achievement of the SDGs in the region and two years later in 2019 published its first statistical abstract achievement the sustainable development goals in the region of the Eurasian Economic Union. It's already included 68 indicators from the global indicator framework supplemented by 22 indicators for the macroeconomic dashboard. Data were presented for those indicators for which data were available for at least three countries, and the number of goals not covered by indicators decreased significantly. Only two goals remain uncovered, goal 12, responsible consumption and production, and goal 13, climate action. In 2020, the statistical brochure to achieving the sustainable development goals in the region of the Eurasian Economic Union was released. However, the number of indicators was reduced as not all country data were available at the time of release. At the same time, the Commission estimates an increasing number of indicators reflecting the implementation of regional programs, uh, which directly or uh, indirectly contribute to the achievement of the SDGs at the regional level. For example, the Commission implements programs on building and ensuring the functioning of a common market for food security in the Union. This is goal two. A common market for medicine. This is goal three. A common 
common database for vacancies. This is goal eight in, in the union, which contribute to the achievement of the SDGs, both at the national level of the member states and the Eurasian Economic Union region. Eventually, the commission decided to develop a regional set of SDG indicators to track progress towards the SDGs at the regional level. To conclude, I'd like to share with you some next steps that the Commission plans to track progress toward the SDGs of the region. Our first priority for the coming year is to develop a regional indicator set, which include the most relevant and highest quality indicators that is in line with the UN global indicators as much as possible, and we are working hard on it now. Based on the regional indicator set to publish the next report on achieving the SDGs in the Eurasian Economic Union region. And honestly, we're thinking on the presentation of the second voluntary regional review at the high level political forum on sustainable development by 2025. And I stop here. Thank you for your attention. Uh, dear Natalia, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. Uh, in a continuation of sharing the Eurasian Economic uh, Union's uh, experience towards the achievement uh, uh, of the SDGs, uh, I want uh, to invite uh, Mr. Andrei Bantilev, head of the Economic uh, Policy Strategy Section at the Microeconomic Policy Department, uh, to take the floor. Mr. Bantilev uh, will focus uh, on the uh, prospects uh, of uh, SDGs achievement uh, within the Eurasian Economic Union in the context of a COVID-19 pandemic and measures uh, taken uh, by the member states uh, to stop uh, the spread of the pandemic. Andre, uh, please, uh, you can start your presentation. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Gore. I try to launch my presentation. <clears throat> uh, so, um, the COVID-19 pandemic has become a big challenge for sustainable development in the Eurasian Economic Union. In collaboration with the member states, the Eurasian Economic Commission has elaborated several blocks of measures. Firstly, uh, emergency. Uh, emergency measures uh, in the areas of customs tariff and uh, non-tariff regulation uh, transport, sanitary, veterinary, phytosanitary control, technical regulation, and labor migration. Uh, for example, such measures included uh, exemption from the custom duties for vital uh, imports positions, uh, such as agricultural, medical, and pharmaceutical products. Uh, secondly, coordination measures. Uh, the Commission has organized a dialogue platform to ensure prompt and efficient consultations and elaboration of coordinated policy response for the member states. Thirdly, long-term measures aimed at ensuring economic recovery and development. And importantly, the measures were largely effective. In addition to ensuring trade and economic growth recovery, uh, the Eurasian Economic Union member states, as well as the Eurasian Economic Commission, pursue the goals of achieving uh, sustainable and inclusive growth. Hence, the importance to uh, monitor the progress in SDGs implementation provided COVID-19 pandemic. Pandemic is likely to slow down the achievement of the SDGs as, and uh, seems to set world countries' progress in many directions away back. Uh, as seen from the slide, the directions uh, expected to be driven by the pandemic are few uh, and generally involve spheres connected with the environment pollution. Even for these goals, the positive effects may promptly evade as soon as the growth is restored, unless the long-term stimuli mechanisms are established. As for the directions affected by the pandemic, the risks differ in terms of the timing of the expected negative impact. Escalating problems of poverty, hunger, or inclusive access to a decent permanent job, SDGs 1, 2, and 8, have already been evident. At the same time, challenged access to quality education, SDG 4, can only manifest in following years, along with the approach to remote education services. These deferred risks 
uh, may aggravate other problems, such as, for instance, social economic inequalities, SDG 10. What is more, the risks are high that the long term objectives of securing sustainable development will be relegated in favor of short term aims of supporting the economy. According to the 2021 SDGs report, the states of Eastern Europe and Central Asia, the region where all the uh, Eurasian Economic Union member state, states belong, have tended to experience either no progress or enhancement in SDGs indicators. The most evident progress is registered in the sphere of fight against poverty. Currently, the SDG 1 is the closest to achieve. Meanwhile, the greatest challenge for the region continues to be associated with the SDG 16 due to high levels of perceived corruption. Aiming at promoting sustainable and green development in the Eurasian Economic Union, the Commission has been engaged in numerous projects and initiatives. So in the final part of my speech, I'd like to tell about one of them. Eurasian Economic Union Sustainable Development Platform. The objectives of the platform are threefold. Uh, firstly, being an international communication platform, it will facilitate the exchange of opinions and experience. Secondly, the platform will allow adopting the scientifically justified approach to monitoring, accessing and scrutinizing the Eurasian Economic Union progress in sustainable and inclusive growth achievement. And thirdly, the platform will contribute to identifying the strategy uh, for implementing the integration initiatives in the sphere of sustainable development. For instance, the expertise of the uh, platform's participants uh, might be of benefit for the elaboration of the concept of green economy principles adoption in the Eurasian Economic Union. So ending my speech, uh, I want uh, to note that the in period uh, of COVID-19 pandemic, the sustainable development agenda is driving even more important. Also, the impact of the pandemic on the SDGs implementation is controversial. There are the directions that obviously require additional support. To provide the necessary stimulus, strengthening multilateral and regional cooperation is important as never before. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, Andrei, uh, thank you very much uh, for your presentation and for sharing the experience of the Eurasian Economic Union and for uh, telling about the measures that were uh, undertaken during the pandemic. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, dear Excellencies, uh, I hope that you can hear me well, uh, and I suggest uh, to proceed uh, to the welcoming remarks uh, from representatives of uh, permanent missions uh, to the UN uh, from two of our member states. Uh, first, uh, to address uh, the audience uh, will be Mr. Arman Isetov, uh, Charge the Affairs of the Republic of uh, Kazakhstan to the United Nations uh, as the uh, representative of the chairing country in the Eurasian Economic Union. Uh, Mr. Isetov, uh, you have the floor. Uh, Thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, distinguished panelists, uh, dear participants. It is my honor to represent the delegation of Kazakhstan in its capacity of the current chair of the Eurasian Economic Union and be a co-organizer of this event in the margins of the 2021 one. Uh, uh, las ODS. In 2019, he presented his first revision of the metas alcanzadas in the ODS, and we are uh, los uh, mayores retos es la integración y uh, Kazajistán es uno de 
uh, uh, muchas iniciativas de integración. Una de ellas es la Unión Euroasiática y eh, o el mercado U. It is a full-fledged international regional economic integration organization. I should underscore that in January this year, President of Kazakhstan, Mr. Kasim Jumar Tokayev, sent an appeal to the heads of the EU member states, where he indicated main priorities of Kazakhstan's current chairmanship. In particular, one of the five priorities is conducting international activities to build systemic dialogue as well as to promote progressive and mutually beneficial cooperation with the EU Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Association of the Southeast Asian Nations, Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation and other key regional economic associations and the largest national economies of Eurasia. Regional integration is a key element of implementing the SDG 17 on partnerships which goes along with the, our first president's initiatives of three dialogues, 3D. One of these dialogues is building cooperation among regional economic organizations. To date, almost 40 countries have officially expressed their intention to develop trade and economic cooperation with the EU to create free trade zones. Being a current chair of the group of landlord developing countries, Kazakhstan takes advantage of EU membership in the way of reducing the cost of its export goods and accordingly the increase in the co competitiveness of our products in foreign markets. To conclude, I would like to wish very fruitful discussions today and thank all the distinguished panelists. The dialogue is very important to achieve the truly inclusive economic progress in the region of EU as well as other regions of the world. In this regards, I would like to underscore the participation of our distinguished colleagues from the Pacific Alliance and ASEAN, which gives the true understanding of the global nature of economic integration to leave no one behind in achieving Agenda 2030 and sustainable economic development. I thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rosetto, for your uh, remarks. And uh, I would like uh, once again uh, to thank uh, the permanent mission uh, of the Republic of Kazakhstan to the United Nations. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are today organizing the event uh, with the uh, support of your mission. Uh, and uh, the, your excellencies, uh, I would like to give uh, the floor to Mr. Dmitry Chumakov, uh, Deputy Permanent Representative uh, of the Russian Federation to the United Nations. Uh, and uh, on behalf of the Eurasian Economic Commission, I would like also to express my uh, gratitude to the uh, permanent missions uh, of all our member states and particularly the Russian Federation for supporting all our initiatives. Спасибо большое. Я так понял, что я могу. Thank you very much. I guess I can speak Russian. I'd like to thank Eurasian Economic Commission for invitation to participate and the Kazakhstan representation for support in the organization of the event. In 2017, the chairmanship of Kyrgyzstan prepared a report that was mentioned by other speakers about integration processes in post-Soviet area. And since that time, we see that sustainable agenda is uh, 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 focus uh, of development of member states. Uh, and uh, we are convinced that expert potential of uh, EAEU uh, will be uh, 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 on a regular basis uh, uh, sent to regional banks of development, uh, regional bank of sustainable development, uh, is uh, uh, recognized by UN uh, as a part of global partnership uh, for the sake of uh, SDG in accordance with Addis Ababa uh, program. It uh, promotes uh, sustainable development and growth and the catalyzer 
of uh, reduction of uh, trade barriers and uh, performing economic reforms, uh, helping SMEs uh, integrate better in the process. Uh, EU is moving forward, uh, proposing models of uh, different technical and production uh, uh, models of cooperation, uh, reduction of uh, different uh, uh, corrective uh, expenses uh, and better interaction between state institutes. On the whole, integration uh, associations uh, are already outside the borders uh, uh, of uh, the previous periods and the creation of uh, common markets and unions uh, result in uh, 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 the fact that uh, SDGs uh, are uniting everyone, increasing uh, e employment situation and innovative development. And uh, during the pandemic, uh, as it was mentioned, uh, it was possible to ensure sustainable development uh, by providing green corridors. Uh, that's what I want to mention to supply countries with the necessary goods for vaccination. Uh, and uh, medical aid and uh, introduction and adoption of digital technologies uh, for free movement of uh, citizens between uh, the uh, inside the union and Kazakhstan, Belarus uh, uh, are thinking of uh, uh, placement of uh, productions. The success of uh, EU project uh, is uh, uh, also uh, part of uh, one way, one uh, belt uh, with China when uh, we are in for a larger economic uh, uh, space uh, that was proposed by President of Russia, Mr. Putin, and large area is a network of uh, regional organizations in close uh, interaction with each other. Eurasian Economic Union shows uh, Shanghai Regional Organization, Association of Southeastern Asia, and uh, to gradually develop into a common economic uh, uh, space uh, with a network of economic corridors, uh, 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 providing, uh, so to speak, uh, a unified transport uh, network and uh, seven uh, interregional uh, uh, associations uh, with the development of uh, uh, Tr trans uh, cross-border uh, facilities and infrastructure. To conclude, I'd like to point out uh, the fact uh, of the activity uh, of UN uh, missions uh, and the cooperation with regional commissions like ACAS and the SCAT, uh, regional commissions uh, for Europe and uh, Asia-Pacific region. Uh, and uh, the first uh, uh, memorandum of cooperation uh, was signed and is being implemented and it's important uh, to uh, note that uh, this cooperation should be on uh, mutual uh, respect and equality respecting uh, national uh, uh, economic uh, uh, peculiarities uh, and uh, it equals with the principles and uh, uh, outlined in the chart of United Nations and uh, uh, let me hope that uh, UN will remain for many years a reliable partner of the Russian Federation. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mr. Chumakov, uh, for your uh, speech, uh, dear uh, speakers, uh, dear participants. Moving forward, uh, we are starting the second part of our side event. Uh, as I have mentioned before, the key purpose for us uh, gathering here today is uh, to create a forum for experience uh, exchange. And uh, I'm hopeful uh, that uh, this webinar will serve as a catalyst for joint engagement uh, in the future as well. Uh, and uh, today uh, we have with uh, us our long-term partner, the Secretary General of the Andean Community. I'm uh, glad to welcome you, uh, Mr. Uh, Pedrazo Guterres. Uh, I can say with uh, pleasure that cooperation uh, between our integration associations has a systemic nature, and uh, this is our second meeting over the last two months, uh, though in a virtual space. Our previous uh, meeting uh, took place on the sidelines of the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum, uh, during which uh, we discussed further ways to strengthen the dialogue uh, between 
the regions of uh, Eurasia and Latin America. Uh, today, uh, we have a unique opportunity to share our experience in achieving the sustainable development goals at the level of our regional uh, associations. Uh, this is important uh, given that the implementation of the SDG uh, can potentially become uh, one of uh, the main areas of interaction within the Memorandum of Understanding between the Eurasian Economic uh, Commission and the General Secretariat of the Andean Community. Uh, I give uh, the floor, distinguished Secretary General. The floor is yours. Gracias. Permítame darle un saludo al Ministro de Asuntos de Integración Macroeconómica. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank uh, the uh, Euro Eurasian Economical uh, Community for giving us the uh, possibility uh, to uh, uh, speak uh, uh, and discuss the problems of the uh, human uh, problems, uh, problems in the human life. And uh, it's very important to understand uh, through the uh, integration, uh, we would overcome the current uh, difficulties. Uh, I'd like to uh, make a contribution. Uh, first of all, we have to uh, have this will. So we should uh, act uh, accordingly uh, at the uh, individual level and the state uh, level uh, to uh, drive the international uh, institutions and uh, this uh, integration it's uh, very important that the institutions uh, to have this will and so we should be convinced that only through this path uh, of integration we are able to achieve it and so we are a good example of uh, such uh, situation uh, we are uh, 150 millions of uh, uh, people from uh, bolivia uh, colombia and uh, our, our countries and only through this uh, path we have uh, we are wor working on uh, these uh, uh, to overcome this uh, difficult uh, economic uh, situation. And so, given the pandemic, uh, we are uh, oriented uh, to uh, achieve the uh, objectives of uh, Agenda 2030. It's very important uh, to highlight that we uh, need an a stronger need for cooperation, uh, a bilateral, but uh, at the regional level as well. So uh, we uh, should be together to reach, uh, to achieve this uh, recovery and the necessary economic recovery, but also to uh, undertake some actions to uh, cope uh, with this uh, difficult uh, social uh, situation in the world. Uh, because uh, there is a loss of jobs, uh, people are getting poor, loss of hope. There is a, a very strong frustration and uh, uh, some people are uh, behaving in an un, un, uh, in a protest way. So uh, some time ago I proposed, well, a couple of years actually, uh, the, in uh, the Latin America scenario, the co uh, convergence of nations, the unity. Well, uh, I, I would say the integration, actually, because we should take into account that the uh, America, Latin America is, has the um, m most uh, uh, amount of uh, integration uh, mechanisms. and. Oh, of course, there are some other uh, uh, um, agreements, uh, such as Mercosur and uh, among others, but uh, uh, driven to the same uh, goal. And I'm absolutely convinced that uh, only through the union we could uh, reach these better results to uh, reach those goals uh, uh, and the o SDS. As the G, uh, we have achieved very important results in a short time. In uh, 128 decisions of different levels, that uh, allows us to say that uh, we are uh, working uh, 
hard and achieving important uh, 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 results. Uh, we have been working on the uh, roaming mechanism and we, we have de protección de marca países bastante central en este sector del planeta o medidas para facilitar y proteger el comercio eh, y para facilitar y proteger el sector agropecuario para que nosotros podamos convertirnos en una especie de despensa and also we have a special institution for monitoring it has to control illegal trade and illegal activities we also are developing diff different types of activities in health service and uh, one more thing our president tries to make efforts to participate in all of the events and all the situations and i we always remember our main goal what we do we do for the people who live in our countries of course we think about the climate change and we think how each of the regions can make their input in uh, to the uh, sustainable development goal related uh, to uh, this point the climate change and uh, it is quite possible that through the collection of information and uh, processing of these data we will be able to um, contribute to this goal and we see that this aid, all these uh, SDGs uh, cannot exist uh, without each other. And uh, we uh, look at the integrated approach. We have to follow, uh, first of all, how the um, population moves, how the investments are implemented, how the different uh, targets are achieved in our integration blocks and we have to consider all these uh, directions together and of course we take a lot of care about this uh, integrated approach to all these issues first of all for example we cannot take only social goals and we have to understand that the social goals are um, a very important part of the whole process and of course for us it is very important to understand that there should be a succession and uh, the sufficient input into each of the goals dear friends all uh, these issues that are within the agenda of sdgs also mean uh, the digital transformation uh, this means uh, a lot of efforts related to digitalization monitoring of all processes and uh, creating the uh, indicators and i'm talking not about the separate points uh, but about all the things together we are talking about uh, the following we uh, within our community every country definitely has uh, its um, own approach and we are monitoring uh, what is happening in each of the countries in order to integrate uh, the positive experience and i'm here to work together with you uh, so that we could uh, achieve the, the uh, uh, the SDGs that we are talking about now and I want to point out that uh, what is done uh, by the Eurasian Union the development of the U Eurasian Union and your experience uh, is very important you are supporting uh, each other and uh, we hope very much 
that we will be able to sign different uh, cooperation uh, documents and through this Eurasian Union will be able to share your uh, their experience uh, what I've been talking so far is uh, definitely uh, in correspondence to what you are doing and how you work of course the pandemic uh, gave special uh, sense to all this and we see that uh, the regional and uh, the general integration problems uh, can be solved together, social and economic ones. In order to move forward uh, to the sustainable development, we understand that in philosophical sense, we are achieving the main goal to improve the living conditions of uh, the people who live in our countries and we have to take care about it. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Distinguished Secretary General, uh, for your interesting uh, speech and for sharing with us uh, the experience of your organization and sharing your uh, vision on the future steps needed to adopt uh, for uh, bringing into life the SDGs uh, 2030 agenda. And uh, from uh, on behalf of the Eurasian Economic uh, Commission and the member countries of the Union, uh, we also assure that uh, we, uh, from our side, are uh, ready to share uh, our experience uh, uh, to uh, move forward uh, and uh, to improve uh, uh, the, 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 to, to share the experience and as uh, my colleagues uh, emphasized uh, the uh, pandemic uh, uh, became a catalyst for all of us uh, and we understood that uh, only uh, regarding to joint efforts uh, we we can uh, go forward and to overcome uh, all the uh, difficulties. Uh, the next speaker who will join us uh, is uh, the uh, Ambassador Gloria Navarrete, the Deputy Undersecretary of Foreign Affairs of the Republic, uh, Republic of uh, Chile. Uh, I would like to emphasize that there is a long history of cooperation between the Eurasian Economic uh, Commission and the Republic of Ch Chile, going back, uh, and now we go back to uh, 2015 when. Uh, the Memorandum of Understanding was signed, uh, uh, and I'm glad to note uh, that there is already an established uh, systemic format of cooperation with uh, frequent uh, meetings uh, between the EC and the government of uh, Chile. And uh, the most recent example uh, uh, would be the uh, what was the uh, meeting between the EC Minister of Integration and the Deputy Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Chile, Rodrigo Yanis, during the 24th uh, St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mrs. Ambassador, uh, the uh, floor is yours. Uh, before I start uh, continuing, uh, uh, one uh, technical remark, uh, dear colleagues, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning, we have a uh, time limitation, and I would kindly ask uh, the speakers uh, uh, to take this uh, into account. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Ambassador, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Moderator. First, I would like to thank you for the invitation to participate. Госпожа Moderator, прежде всего я хочу поблагодарить за участие, участвовать в этом. And share Chile's experience in the implementation of the 2030s agenda and the progress made at regional level using the mechanisms available within the multilateral system. The 2030 agenda created a new development paradigm based on a balanced integration of the social, economic, and environmental dimension. Hence, development is a multidimensional concept and comprises specific challenges for each country. Each country sets their own national goals, adjusting them to the SDGs, and also development recognizes the need for collaborative work and the contribution of various sectors and relevant stakeholders. In the national level, Chile monitors the implementation of the 2030 Agenda, and progress has been made in the following. In the creation of an institutional framework that we called the National Council, 
preparation of the national diagnosis of the 2030 agenda and the SDGs and first and second voluntary national presentations at the United Nations in the year 2017 and 2019. Beyond the national implementation of the SDGs, Chile has developed different initiatives to support them, such as 2021 International Year of the Fruits and Vegetables, Food System Summit, also in this year, to raise awareness to change, to change the way of producing, consuming, and conceiving food, collaboration in the vaccination process of Ecuador and Paraguay, support and logistical facilities within the COVID-19 framework with Uruguay and Peru, and bilateral relations with Asia Pacific, uh, Chile, China joint declaration aimed at strengthening cooperation within the framework of the free trade agreement and combating COVID-19. On March 2021, representatives from the governments of the 33 Latin American and Caribbean countries from 20 United Nations agencies, funds and programs, intergovernmental organizations, financial institutions, and the academic and private sectors reaffirmed their commitment to implementing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. All the parties pointed out the relevance of increasing efforts to confront the difficulties caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. This meeting approved a document which has 94 conclusions and recommendations that call upon the international community to reinforce measures aimed at addressing specific challenges that hinder achievement of some SDG targets, such as protect biodiversity, develop disaster risk reduction strategies, increase the availability of timely quality and disaggregated data, foster youth participation, and enhance financial resources, capacity building, and technology transfer to developing countries. To conclude, in the current scenario, Chile has adopted measures to support families through monetary transfers, protection and job creation, and support of SMEs to help them face the sanitary crisis and foster an economic recovery with a gender perspective. For Chile, the SDGs represent humanities most ambitious and integrated effort to fight poverty and inequality, promote education and health, protect the environment, and foster justice, among, among other issues. To conclude, we reaffirm that international cooperation, multilateralism, and solidarity are not a mere option, but, but the only way to recover and build a resilient equal and sustainable world. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, distinguished ambassador, for your uh, speech and for your interesting remarks. Uh, following up uh, your speech, uh, I would like uh, once again to emphasize uh, that we uh, deeply appreciate uh, your government's support in uh, developing uh, and strengthening uh, the dialogue uh, between the Eurasian Economic Commission and uh, the Pacific Alliance. Uh, and uh, with the assistance of the Chilean side, the participation of the representatives from our commission in the uh, summits of the Pacific Alliance uh, has become a uh, reality. Uh, excellencies, dear participants, uh, our next speaker uh, is uh, Dr. Sita Samrit, the head of uh, poverty eradiction and gender division at ASEAN. ASEAN uh, is also uh, uh, one of uh, our uh, long-term uh, good partners, uh, and as you know, Memorandum of Understanding uh, has been was signed uh, between the Eurasian Economic Commission and the ASEAN, and now we are uh, very actively uh, cooperating. Uh, 
in the framework of the Memorandum of Understanding and the Action Plan, uh, which was uh, uh, signed and is acting until uh, 2025. Uh, currently, the interaction format between the EC and ASEAN uh, is reaching a level uh, when we are thinking on uh, establishing a separate dialogue mechanism, the EIU ASEAN. And I would like to uh, 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 thank our ASEAN partners uh, uh, for the good example of cooperation between the two inter integration associations. Uh, uh, Dr. Samrit, uh, please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And thank you again for having us. It's already quite dark here. So I just would like to invite everyone to focus on uh, the presentation. I understand that we only have five minutes. So um, the organizer will uh, flash onto the screen the presentation from uh, the ASEAN Secretariat on SDG. Okay, thank you very much uh, for sharing the screen for us. Uh, given that we only have five minutes, so uh, the presentation from ASEAN will focus on achieving the SDGs from both progress and opportunities perspective. Next slide, please. Um, the next slide is simply to um, show that the ASEAN commitments to uh, sustainable development is endemic to uh, our existence as in is in the ASEAN Charter, as well as a number of key uh, regional declarations and documents. And uh, for the information of the participants here, uh, for ASEAN, the coordinator for uh, sustainable development cooperation is Thailand. Next slide, please. However, we uh, would like to present quickly that um, SDGs implementation in ASEAN, uh, there are um, diversities in terms of where we are uh, for each goal. So for example, um, on poverty eradication, we have been doing quite well. Uh, however, for areas, uh, for example, on clean energy and uh, sustainable uh, production and consumption, uh, we need to work more to ensure that progress is speedy enough and uh, for climate action as well as peace and justice. So that's goal uh, 16. ASEAN has to double efforts um, to ensure uh, that we meet the goals and the targets that SDGs uh, are aiming for. Next slide, please. For the common platforms of ASEAN, of course, uh, as a regional uh, entity, we need a common platforms uh, to implement the SDGs or at least to have the dialogue on SDGs among us as in the ASEAN nations as well as with uh, partners. Next slide, please. So uh, we acknowledge that there is a clear alignment between ASEAN vision as well as uh, the SDGs. So um, we have come up with the complementarities initiative under the leadership of Thailand back in uh, 2016. So this is, uh, to put it very simply, um, an allied vision and a joint actions between ASEAN and UN agency, especially UNSCAP, uh, to work together on ASEAN. And this also includes the establishment of the ASEAN Center for Sustainable Development Studies and Dialogue in Thailand uh, back in 2019 or 2020. Uh, next slide, please. Aside from uh, this um, alignment, uh, next slide, please. Aside from this uh, alignment of the SDGs and ASEAN vision, we also work on data indicators so that we can monitor the progress of the SDG. We really understand that SDGs are complex and to understand where we are and how far we have come, we need to work uh, more on strengthening our data and indicators capacity. Next slide, please. So um, we also work uh, with a number of key partners uh, on the SDGs, including uh, China. So this is, this is just an example of every year we have ASEAN China UNDP Symposium. Next slide, please. And we also work uh, very diligently 
with the EU as uh, this slide is on the high level ASEAN EU dialogue on sustainable development. So we work together on as in uh, the dialogue and exchanges on gender equality, green growth, as well as um, how to engage more the private sector and civil society organizations uh, into um, the work on uh, sustainable development between ASEAN and the EU. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, apart from uh, the work with the partners, we also focus on our own national development planning agencies uh, as they are, at least for the ASEAN context, they are the key actors in implementing SDGs and in localizing uh, SDGs at the national level. So we are trying to enhance their synergy and for them to have a dialogue and work together. And we hope that the national development planning agencies of ASEAN can interact and learn from the experience of our partners uh, on SDGs as well. Next slide, please. So um, the following slides, I would just summarize very quickly that of course uh, we uh, have the dialogue with the partners. We have a number of uh, established platforms as well as uh, the work on data and monitoring the progress of SDGs. And importantly, uh, we also work on um, fortifying, if I may use that word, uh, our knowledge uh, and uh, analytical um, capacity on uh, how we look at uh, sustainable and inc inclusive development. So this uh, is available also on our website, the ASEAN Development Outlook that we work with University of Cambridge on understanding development trajectories of ASEAN. Next slide, please. We also work with uh, UN Women. Um, so uh, the ne next slide, please. Thank you so much. Um, we also work with UN Women on uh, the ASEAN Gender Outlook. I think uh, Ambassador uh, has talked about the importance of gender equality. And this is, again, uh, a bit of advertisement. This is also on our website. The ASEAN Gender Outlook is uh, the report that attempts to look at each uh, SDGs from the lens of gender and empowerment of women and girls. So um, this is our first attempt. To, uh, to assess the SDGs from the experiences uh, from uh, women and girls. Next slide, please. Um, and of course, now um, all the speakers talked about COVID-19 pandemics and uh, its repercussions on the SDG. So for ASEAN, uh, we have established the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework, which we hope is an exit strategy from the challenges brought about by COVID-19 pandemic. So this is just uh, for us to highlight that uh, to recover from COVID-19 pandemic in the context of uh, securing the progress and the gains of sustainable development, we focus on health system, human security, um, market and economic integration, as well as digital transformation and sustainable and resilient future. So I would just go directly to the last slide uh, on the potentials of regional and interregional cooperation. Of course, the MOU has already uh, has been established between us. The last slide um, we listed here only some suggestions that uh, for uh, SDGs, ASEAN is paying um, attention on how we can expand and deepen the partnerships to implement the SDGs, especially in the context of COVID-19 pandemic. We hope to continue to exchange like this uh, event, best practices and learnings, uh, including at the regional level, but also uh, bring in some insights from the national level um, to achieve uh, the SDGs despite um, the challenges uh, caused by COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, uh, we hope to continue to adapt to the new normal um, in implementing the SDGs, especially in uh, data and uh, knowledge uh, exchanges. So this is the end of the presentation from the ASEAN Secretariat. And thank you again for having us.
Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Samrit, uh, for your interesting and uh, substantive presentation. Uh, and once again, uh, thank you the uh, ASEAN Secretariat uh, for the uh, close cooperation with the Russian Economic Commission. And I, as I have already mentioned, we really appreciate uh, this uh, cooperation. Uh, excellencies, dear participants, now we will hear from um, one of uh, the UN uh, regional commissions, uh, Nikolai Pamoshnikov, uh, head of uh, sub-regional office uh, for uh, North and Central Asia at the uh, UN Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific has kindly accepted our invitation uh, to take part uh, in uh, today's event. Uh, and uh, I would like to mention that uh, we uh, closely cooperate with uh, the sub-regional office in uh, various areas of interest and the sphere of uh, sustainable uh, development is one of them. Uh, Nicole, the floor is yours, and I will kindly ask once again the speakers uh, to respect the time limitations uh, uh, because of uh, our schedule. Thank you very much for your understanding. Nikolai, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Ms. Chair. I'm trying uh, to share my screen. Uh, so, uh, Excellencies, distinguished participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you first uh, Eurasian Economic Commission for inviting me uh, to contribute to this important discussion uh, on uh, regional integration as means for achieving uh, SDGs. Uh, as far as uh, ESCAP is concerned, uh, ESCAP has over 50 members and associate member states representing two thirds of the world population and a large degree of diversity. And uh, that's why ESCAP is also supporting regional integration at sub-regional levels through five sub-regions. And uh, for today uh, uh, presentation, I will mainly focus on ESCAP's work and support to member states in our sub-region of North and Central Asia, which includes nine countries, namely Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russian Federation, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. Uh, four of these countries are part of Eurasian Economic Union, while others are immediate uh, neighbors. Uh, bound by common Soviet uh, past, regional integration for countries in North and Central Asia is crucial, both for achieving SDGs at country level and to jointly uh, tackle sustainable development challenges that go beyond national uh, uh, bodies. Uh, so how does uh, progress in achieving the SDGs currently look like for North and Central Asia? ESCAP Asia Pacific SDG progress report for 2021 shows that North and Central Asia region as most of the rest of the world was not on track to achieve the sustainable development goals even before the COVID-19 pandemic uh, hit. Uh, as you can see from the graphic uh, on the right-hand side, if NCA subregion would be on track, all the bars should reach over the 2020 line, but they only do for SDG 10 on inequalities and for SDG 16 on peace, justice, and institutions. And in both cases, we only have data for very few of the targets that uh, make up uh, those SDGs. In fact, lack of data remains a serious challenge. Moreover, uh, as you can see uh, by the red color, SDG 11 on cities, SDG 13 on climate action, and SDG 14 on life be below water even saw regression. Uh, as these two graphs uh, shows, the NCA subregion lost a significant amount of work hours in 2020 because of justified restrictions that were put in place to curb the pandemic and poverty has increased, with not only extreme poverty increasing, but mostly persons that previously were doing okay having joined the ranks of poor. 
Uh, in cautiously optimistic scenario, the Northern Central Asia subregion could return back to growth this uh, uh, year and next, but the dynamics would be weaker compared to all developing countries. So Asia and the Pacific as a country grouping. You can see that uh, uh, Asia and the Pacific has uh, five zero uh, development, uh, uh, you see, uh, and uh, uh, Northern Central Asia on, or only 2.6 uh, projection for, uh, for uh, GDP growth. So uh, what about the situation in Northern Central Asia on COVID-19 and vaccination? Uh, we increasingly don't have much reason to stay even cautiously optimistic. On the left, you can see collection of recent COVID-19 related news in the countries. You see the uh, pandemic is still high. And uh, if you look at the, uh, to the right, the level of vaccination, it's uh, quite low in our countries. Uh, what ESCAP can propose, uh, propose for building uh, forward better? The socioeconomic impact of COVID-19 pandemic was amplified due to lack of resilience and investments in people and planet. Uh, continuity in policy support is a must and recovery policy packages should focus on building resilience and investing in 2030 agenda. To deal with various economic and non-economic shocks, a more integrated risk management approach uh, to planning and policy making is needed. Uh, as you can see in the right hand side graphic, ESCAP proposes a building forward better policy package that calls for investments in social services, digital access and green development. Uh, ESCAP uh, sustainable regional connectivity lies in, in, at the heart of uh, the regional roadmap for implementing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and is the core element of enhancing regional cooperation. Uh, ESCAP promotes integrated approaches to broader connectivity, combining transport, trade, energy, and digital networks in the context of COVID-19 recovery strategies. Uh, I will not go through each support tool in detail. I just would like to raise awareness there here that ESCAP has a whole list of offers that depending on country demand can be offered individually or in combination from the national SDG progress assessments dashboard to the Excel based model for designing integrated policies to measuring inequality using multiple indicators in our D index. Turkmenistan has just recently undertaken this uh, exercise. Uh, ESCAP uh, also offer VNR trainings, including on how to involve multiple stakeholders in the process. We can also arrange for a twinning program if a pair of group or countries uh, so wishes, and we can support voluntary local reviews. Uh, ESCAP is uh, mandated to support the follow-up and review process of member states and does so uh, in inter alia through annual SDG forums and sub at sub-regional and regional levels, which then flow into discussions at uh, high-level political forum. So on 5th and uh, 7 October, we will organize sub-regional SDG forum and invite all participants to join this event. Uh, a few words uh, about uh, partnership because we have very important topic to be today about uh, regional integration. So ESCAP strengthening this uh, uh, partnership uh, uh, with uh, different uh, stakeholders and different entities at this table, you can see that uh, in 2018, we had an agreement with Islamic Development Bank on a digital platform for 
uh, technologies and scientific uh, solutions for SDGs. We have uh, 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 MOUs with different entities, including Eurasian Economic Commission, Eurasian Development Bank, Asian Development Bank. And this year we will uh, renew uh, MOUs with Shanghai Cooperation Organization and Economic Cooperation Organization. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Uh, dear Nikolai, thank you very much uh, for your uh, presentation and for uh, sharing uh, the uh, experience uh, and the achievements uh, of the uh, SDGs uh, in the region of uh, Asia and uh, the Pacific. Uh, Excellencies, dear uh, speakers, participants, uh, our uh, next speaker is uh, Mr. Vladimir Pereboev. Uh, he is the head uh, of uh, projects at the Center for uh, Integration Studies uh, at the Eurasian Development Bank. Uh, the uh, Eurasian Development Bank uh, is an international uh, financial organization that uh, promotes the uh, integration and development of its member states, uh, including uh, the Eurasian Economic Union. Uh, five countries. Uh, we here at the Eurasian Economic uh, Commission uh, value the provided assistance uh, for uh, stable development of our economies, uh, increasing their competitiveness and uh, deepening uh, their economic integration. Uh, the bank actively provides analytical support uh, to the entire process of the Eurasian integration. And uh, I'm sure uh, that we will hear interesting insights uh, on the bank's vision and and uh, workings uh, on today's topic of uh, discussion from Mr. Perebov. Uh, uh, Vladimir, the floor is yours. Dear, yes, dear colleagues, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me uh, to represent the Eurasian Development Bank on such an important event. Uh, excellences, uh, distinguished participants, uh, uh, it is uh, it is um, uh, no secret that a multi multilateral development banks uh, play an important role in the uh, sustainable development of their operating regions. Uh, the Eurasian Development Bank uh, unites uh, six member countries, all the uh, all the countries of the Eurasian Economic Union and Tajikistan. Uh, and uh, over the uh, 15 years of its existence, uh, the uh, Eurasian Development Bank has earned the reputation of a recognized international financial development institution uh, with a focus on regional integration. And uh, as a reliable partner, the ADB, uh, 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 the, the ADB adheres to the highest uh, environmental, environmental standards and invests uh, in projects that meet uh, its environmental, in, environmental criteria. Uh, starting with the uh, adoption and uh, approval of the uh, 2030 Agenda for Sustainable uh, Development by the UN in 2015, uh, the EDB uh, began uh, to take uh, into account all the SDGs when planning the bank's activities. Uh, the integration of the SDGs into the uh, priorities of the EDB's activities became a basis uh, for selection of uh, supported projects and tasks, uh, thereby uh, supporting the vectors of sustainable socio-economic development of the region. Uh, following these goals, uh, in December 2020, uh, the EDB and uh, UNDP signed a memorandum of understanding to expand cooperation among five countries, Armenia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Tajikistan, where both organizations operate. Uh, the memorandum uh, specified that the parties would undertake uh, to make joint investments to achieve SDGs, uh, increase the share of investments in public infrastructure, and uh, increase the scale of green financing in the CIS region. Uh, the main priority of cooperation uh, between two organizations uh, is development of digital transformations aimed at creating a single digital space, uh, accelerating the integration of public administration systems and the private sector. SDG-related events uh, have repeatedly highlighted the need for data innovation. 
so applying the results in this area is of particular importance. Uh, in June 2020, the EDB and the International Bank for Economic Cooperation uh, signed a, a memorandum for cooperation on <clears throat> projects aimed at achieving uh, the UN Sustainable Development Goals uh, too. Also in 2020, uh, the EDB became a shareholder of the Green Finance Center of the Estena International Financial Center in order to expand the EDB's green finance operations to create a leading center for green finance and green expertise in Central Asia. Efforts have been undertaken to accredit the bank uh, to the Green Climate Fund, uh, which supports climate projects and programs. Um, and uh, also in June 2021, the EDB and Rusnano Corporation uh, signed an agreement on the implementation of alternative energy, high technology and green hydrogen projects in the EU countries, including the EDB's participation in financing a new fund uh, for alternative energy, which is being formed by Rusnano. Uh, implementation um, of the bank's SDG projects is a separate uh, topic, uh, but I can uh, highlight that um, over the past five years, EDB has provided active financial support uh, to projects in the field of renewable energy, energy efficiency, and waste management. Uh, the total investment in these areas amounted uh, to about $650 million, of which uh, $600 million was for uh, about 17 renewable energy projects. Uh, in order to develop this area and this direction, uh, in 2019, uh, the bank adopted a program for financing renewable energy projects, uh, through which uh, the EDB finances a number of green projects, uh, such as uh, construction, such as construction of uh, uh, solar uh, solar power solar power plants in of wind and hydroelectric power plants in Russia in cooperation with the International Investment Bank and the New Development Bank and a number of other projects. Uh, the bank plans to expand its portfolio of green projects uh, to achieve uh, SDGs in six member countries. These ambitious goals are declared in the strategy of the ADB for 2022-2026, approved by the bank's council headed by the Prime Minister of Kazakhstan about a week ago. Uh, uh, to conclude, uh, regional integration, uh, including through specialized inter interstate institutions, uh, contributes to the coordination and consolidation of efforts of the participating states in the implementation of the SDGs, adaptation and effective implementation of the best global practices and standards across the region. The Eurasian Development Bank, in close cooperation and partnership with the Eurasian Economic Commission, the UNDP, and other international development institutions, consi consi consistently uh, promotes the sustainable development of its member countries and uh, their economic integration. At the same time, the bank adheres to the principles of social and environmental responsibility in its ongoing national and cross-border projects including in the areas of transport and energy infrastructure, renewable energy and housing management. It is uh, no coincidence that the bank's uh, development strategy uh, for the period up to 2026 focuses on the sustainable development goals and expanding the practice of green finance. And uh, uh, well, progressively expand uh, focusing on regional integration and uh, sustainable union and CIS regions. We consider it important to combine our efforts to introduce common principles of a green economy in the Eurasian Economic Union and to stimulate joint projects on the members of the member states. The bank is open uh, to multilateral, multilateral cooperation with the participants in today's event. Thank you very much.
Uh, thank you very much, uh, dear Vladimir, uh, for your uh, speech, for your presentation. Uh, I'm optimistic uh, that uh, your contribution to the uh, topic uh, of the SDGs uh, as a major analytical partner for us uh, uh, will only uh, increase in future. Uh, excellencies, uh, dear participants, uh, today uh, we have uh, with us the Deputy Executive Secretary at the uh, UN Economic uh, Commission for Europe, uh, Mr. Mitri uh, Mariasi. Uh, the Eurasian Economic uh, Commission is uh, closely uh, collaborating uh, with the UNIS on issues uh, related to the implementation of the uh, UN Sustainable Development Strategy until uh, 2030, the development of uh, new recommendations, uh, taking into account the epidemiological uh, situation, uh, leading uh, to the revision of existing and the development of uh, new standards. The Eurasian Economic Commission is uh, also a frequent participant at the UNIS regional forums on sustainable development, and this year's uh, forum uh, was not an exception. Uh, Mr. Mariasin, uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much, and uh, apologies that I could only join uh, towards the second half of the meeting, but I was able to follow the proceedings. Uh, let me start by thanking the Eurasian Economic Commission for your leadership in this topic, for organizing uh, the, the event that looks at regional integration and SDGs, uh, and for assembling such an impressive lineup of speakers. Uh, my job is much easier, and I know we only have a few minutes left, uh, because most of the speakers covered the topics that I have in my speech. So instead of going through it, what I'll do, I'll just make a few highlights. Uh, first, uh, it was great that the Eurasian Economic Commission colleagues referred to the 2021 uh, SDG progress report that was prepared by the UNSCE Statistical Division together with our partners uh, and many other UN agencies involved. Let me just bring one important highlight from it. Unfortunately, as of today, uh, UNICE region, which is 56 member states, including the European Union and, and the US and Canada, even with this constellation, UNICE region would only achieve 23 targets by 2030, as of today. That's 23 out of 169. Uh, progress in 57 targets will accelerate. For nine targets, trends are negative. And then for 80 targets, which is basically half, we don't have sufficient national data which points to one very, very important realization, data availability, quality statistics, data innovation would be a critical element if we have, uh, if we are to really seriously uh, make sure that national and regional policy making is focused on the sustainable development agenda. Second, I'd like to refer to what uh, the Deputy Permanent Representative of Russia uh, to the UN in New York mentioned Sustainable development goals are increasingly the domain of regional integration bodies. Uh, and we, we, we as UNIC, we work very closely with all international organizations, regional integration bodies in the pan-European region. And, and we see how much attention is being paid to the Agenda 2030, be it in the Eurasian Economic Union's uh, key documents. And we've seen the report. It is really very important that this is being looked at uh, be it in the European Union's uh, framing documents, uh, be it in other organizations. Uh, so regional approaches to SDG achievement, informing national policies based on regional understanding is what we think is, is the way forward. Thirdly, we, uh, we have a full realization now that the COVID-19 pandemic has only exacerbated the situation and that countries need to stick together. And, and there is a critical task of not just coordinating efforts, for example, on, on things like vaccine development or COVID-related measures, but ensuring that the COVID recovery is, is really uh, helping countries reconnect, reconnect trade flows, reconnect transport routes that have been disrupted by, by the pandemic. And we have been working very closely uh, with member states in the region, for example, uh, uh, through our border crossings observatory throughout the pandemic to make sure that the up-to-date information and quick reaction is there when it comes to, avail, you know, to, to border crossings, customs points uh, across the region. But I think what lies ahead is even more important. How do we digitize trade? How do we digitize transport uh, paperwork? 
how do we make sure that existing UN legal instruments are useful and used by member states across the world, across the region, including in the Eurasian space. And here, I'm very, very pleased to say that uh, as part of our memorandum of understanding and action plan with the Eurasian Economic Commission, we have been able to agree with some very practical uh, steps, for example, um, on how to use the standards of the UN Center for Trade Facilitation and Electronic Business, which is hosted by UNEC, um, for the Eurasian Union's trade facilitation agenda. This includes, by the way, the use of end-to-end -end technologies uh, such as smart contract, blockchain, Internet of Things, and so on. Uh, increasingly important, the cooperation on transport, especially on railway transport. And one might think, what does this have to do with SDGs? In our view, without connectivity, trade, and improved uh, legal frameworks that connect countries, the poorest of the poorest will suffer, inequalities will grow, and economies will not be on a sustainable path. So in our view, this, this, there is a very strong connection. Finally, I'd like to highlight our, our uh, cooperation with in Central Asia as one important part of the region under the SPECA program, the Special Program for the Economies of Central Asia. Uh, please stay tuned. We will have a SPEC Economic Forum in, in Tashkent in November 2021, 20, uh, and it will focus on connectivity, transport, trade, and sustainability. So again, a very strong Agenda 2030 dimension there. And of course, this is a joint partnership between the seven member states, UNSCAP and UNIC. Uh, let me stop here, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues. And once again, thank you for the opportunity to speak and uh, congratulate the Eurasian Economic Commission on a very successful event. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, dear Mitri, uh, for your interesting uh, speech uh, and uh, for being here uh, with us. Uh, uh, well, once again, I would like to emphasize uh, that uh, uh, we here from our side uh, give great importance uh, to the uh, cooperation with UMIS. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, we also hope uh, that in the framework of our cooperation, uh, we could uh, move forward and uh, to reach uh, more uh, uh, productive results uh, uh, in order to uh, have uh, COVID recovery uh, as soon as possible in, uh, and also to deepen the cooperation uh, in uh, all of these spheres of mutual interest. Uh, thank you once again very much. Uh, uh, excellencies, uh, dear participants, uh, uh, I would like uh, to uh, give uh, the floor to uh, Ksenia Pavlova, a representative from the Federal State Statistics Service uh, in Russian Federation. Uh, Ms. Pavlova will talk about the monitoring uh, practices of the SDG indicators in Russian Federation. Uh, please, the uh, floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, today, I'd like to present uh, a short overview of ECG monitoring process in Russia. Uh, first of all, I will start with this illustration of ECG coordination mechanism. Uh, there are two official groups on ECGs, uh, Rostat and other federal authorities and the expert community. Interdepartmental Working Group on Climate Change and Sustainable Development under the Presidential Executive Office includes high-level representatives from federal authorities. Uh, in 2016, this group began active work on uh, monitoring and implementation of the ECGs. Uh, the other group is uh, the working group of experts on information and statistical support for monitoring the SDGs chaired by Rostat, established for detailed elaboration the SDG indicators. Uh, it includes representatives of more than 20 ministers and agencies and uh, various Russian scientific institutions and expert community. Uh, officially, Rostat is authorized to coordinate the activities on ECG indicators. Uh, in Russia, we have decentralized uh, statistical systems, so the majority of federal authorities work with the international organizations uh, independently in their uh, statistical domain. That's why we have a set of coordination mechanisms, and one of them is the Federal Plan of Statistical Works. And this is a detailed list of all the statistical activities in our country coordinated by Rostat. A special section 2.8 for SDGs has been integrated to this plan. Uh, 
Uh, it consists of uh, 99 global ADG indicators for now, and uh, here you can see the information on the availability uh, of data for all uh, 17 goals. We also plan to include 15 additional indicators till the end of the year. Uh, in uh, 2020, the national set of ESG indicators was improved, and it was one of our priorities for past few years to create a national set which reflects our national characteristics, local conditions, and statistical capacity. Uh, it takes into account the tasks defined by strategic documents of the government of the Russian Federation, as well as the national and federal projects. Uh, on the slide, you can see the structure of the national set and the number of indicators for each goal. Uh, it should be noted that um, more than a half of indicators are presented with region, regional disaggregation. So the national set of SDG indicators is used in preparation uh, of national reports and publications on the achievement on the, of the SDGs. In order to provide informational support for ESG monitoring process at the national level, we have a special section on the Rostats website. It contains general information on ESGs, detailed list of indicators with the current status of their development, national set of ESG indicators. Uh, also, it provides up-to-date information on activities at the national and international levels, publications on ESGs, and reference to useful resources. Uh, here you can see how it looks like, and each indicator has corresponding responding buttons, data, and metadata. Uh, this year, we have upgraded the data dissemination section. Uh, there used to be a link to the official platform for data dissemination, which is available only in Russian. And now we have an indicator description, interactive charts, and an option to save Excel files with data in English. Uh, the statistical yearbook SDGs in the Russian Federation has been published since uh, 2019. Uh, you can find it online on our website in English and in Russian. Uh, on the slide, you can see the last year issue. It includes data for all the 17 SDGs, as well as some indicators are presented with regional disaggregation and the section of international comparisons. Uh, the extended statistical annex can also be found on our website. We are currently working on the third edition of the statistical yearbook. Uh, in uh, 2019, the first regional report of, on SDGs was released. The first regional report was prepared by a regional statistics office in Rostov region, uh, jointly with private sector. It includes the progress of Rostov region on each of the 17 SDGs. The second edition of Rostov regional report was published this year, and the national set of SDG indicators and data from the statistical yearbook were used as a base for regional monitoring. Uh, the first Russian VNA was presented last year by the Minister of Economic Development of the Russian Federation. During the preparation of the review uh, of the process, uh, were created 17 thematic groups for each goal. Uh, they included representatives of Rostat, federal authorities, academic institutions, non-profit organizations, public organizations, and businesses. Uh, Rostat took part in the work of all the groups, as well as in preparation of the statistical annex. Uh, from the very beginning, Russia has been actively participating in the preparation of international documents related to SDGs. Russia is a member of interagency and expert group on SDG indicators. As you can see, our experts participate in all activities conducted by IAEG SDGs. And also Russia is a member of its working group on SDMX and working group on measurement of development support. Uh, being a member of SDMX Working Group, Russia is actively working on the implementation of the standard. On this slide, you can see the timeline of our successful experience in transmission of SDG indicators and SDMX. We also taken part in multilingual SDG DSD translation initiative and translated the structure into Russian for the convenience of all the stakeholders. Uh, also, Russia is a member of the steering group of the Conf Conference of European Statisticians on Statistics for the SDGs. This group was created in 2015. It aimed at developing uh, the roadmap for the generation of statistical data for monitoring the SDGs and its subsequent implementation. The first edition of the roadmap was approved in 2017, and at the moment, the second edition of the roadmap is being prepared, and Russia participated in the consultations during the compilation of this document. 
And finally, just a brief overview of our main plans till the end of the year. Uh, we are planning to add 15 global SDG indicators in section 2.8 of the Federal Plan of Statistical Works. Also, we plan to increase the number of SDG indicators in the national set with regional disaggregation. And uh, we plan to prepare the third edition of the statistical yearbook SDGs in the Russian Federation, including regional indicators, of course, in, Rus in English and in Russian. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Pavlova, for being here and for uh, sharing with us uh, the uh, experience uh, of the Federal State Statistics Service of Russian Federation and uh, also for sharing with us uh, uh, your uh, plans. Uh, it is worth mentioning that uh, uh, despite uh, we are talking today about the uh, regional dimension of the SDGs and the importance on monitoring the progress at the regional level without uh, clear understanding what is going on at the level of national states, uh, this task uh, would be nearly impossible. Thank you very much. Uh, your uh, participants, speakers, excellencies, um, of today's uh, event. Our side event is uh, coming uh, to an end, and now we uh, will have our uh, last uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Alexander Karaliov, uh, the uh, Deputy Head of Eurasian Sector at the uh, Higher School of Economics. Uh, Mr. Karaliov, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, first of all, thank you, dear moderator. Thanks, Eurasian Economic Union, for having me here and uh, giving me the floor. So I would be very quick. So, uh, Colleagues have already covered a lot of issues, a lot of prospects in terms of the Eurasian Economic Union in developing the sustainable uh, sustainable development goals. I will focus during my speech mostly on some kind of uh, issues and the prospects for the development of the this this very important field um, of um, Eurasian Economic Union. So I would like to say that at the supranational level, the coordination on the achievement of the sustainable development goals needs to be improved. So the Eurasian Economic Union Treaty uh, from 2014 does not contain norms regulating environmental relations between countries. So this is actually the limitation. So the agreement on interaction in the field of ecology and environmental protection and the Interstate Ecological Council operates only within the framework of the SIS, uh, um, Commonwealth of Independent States. So that will be actually very important maybe to somehow to export and use this experience, very effective and successful experience, successful experience for the Eurasian Economic Commission and the Eurasian Economic Union in general. So the study of the influence of the integration dynamics in the Eurasian Economic Union on the SDG achievement by states is only at the initial stage, requiring a coordinated macroeconomic policy, improvement of the forecasting apparatus, harmonization of forecast perimeters, including the improvement of methods for assessing the degree of integration of individual Euro Eurasian economic union countries into the world economy and the recent external economic trends, or we can say the recent external economic shocks, for example, the growth of protectionism, the rise of sanctions, unilateral, uh, unilateral, uh, unilateral uh, restrictive measures, of course, the trade wars between the United States and China, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic, and the turn to the east in terms of the foreign trade, which is not the actual the external shock, but also a very huge trend, which will go up uh, in five or um, 10 years in the foreseeable future. Uh, in achieving the SDG in the Eurasian Union, uh, in the Eurasian region in general, an important role is assigned to the business, which must reconsider its strategies, taking into account the values of corporate social responsibility, international labor standards, anti-corruption, resp responsible supply chain, gender equality, and the principle, uh, the principles of uh, green finance, which is also a huge trend, especially in the European Union. And it's also important for, for large manufacturing corporations from the union countries seeking to expand access to the global market to keep up with the latest uh, trends in the low carbon climate agenda. As a result uh, of such strategies, the Eurasian Economic Union can uh, receive significant benefits that contribute to the advancement of not only individual countries of the state, but also the largest companies to global leadership, increasing their global status, brand awareness, and capitalization growth. And finally, ensuring the, effective, the effectiveness on the transition to sustainable development is impossible 
without the development of inadequate, of inadequate system of goals and indicators. So it's necessary both to further improve the selection methodology of the available statistical indicators, quantitatively characterizing the achievements of the SDGs within the Eurasian Economic Union, and to develop new indicators for missing areas, either to implement international standards or to take into account the recommendations, uh, for example, from OCD, to improve the quality uh, and comparability of economic statistics. So coordination of statistical activities in the Eurasian space, Eurasian Economic Union, building up professional research potential, introducing advanced international standards, including in methodological and classification is acquiring additional significance. So once again, thank you very much for having me here and giving me the floor and chance to present my knowledge and speech. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, thanks for a very good conversation. Uh, Mr. Alexander, uh, thank you very much uh, for your speech. Um, uh, dear speakers, uh, excellencies, uh, dear participants, uh, I would like uh, to thank uh, everyone uh, for uh, being here and for accepting uh, our invitation to take part in uh, today's event. Uh, it uh, has been a success uh, merely because of your uh, valuable uh, contributions and the uh, willingness uh, to uh, share your varying perspectives and approaches uh, towards uh, achieving our common goal, the, uh, the 2040 uh, agenda for the SDGs. Uh, we have managed to gather here representatives uh, from our partner regional integration associations, uh, UN uh, regional commissions, uh, representatives of uh, expert community and the academia. And uh, I highly appreciate uh, the uh, participants of our partners and uh, the uh, interesting speeches uh, that uh, were being made uh, during today's uh, event. Uh, as uh, I have been informed about uh, 100 uh, participants have followed our discussion today here uh, in Zoom, and uh, this uh, illustrates the strong interest uh, towards uh, today's topic of uh, concern. Uh, and uh, in the end, uh, concluding, I would once again uh, uh, like to uh, thank uh, also the uh, permanent uh, representatives of our member countries uh, for uh, by, by helping us uh, to have today's uh, event uh, here. And uh, I would like to take the floor and on behalf of the Eurasian Economic Commission to express our uh, gratitude to the uh, representatives of the Russian Federation uh, for uh, helping us uh, also to organize the creative events uh, by the analogy with the photo exhibition uh, dedicated to the implementation of the SDGs in the Eurasian Economic Region in 2019 uh, within the framework of uh, high level political forum. Uh, concluding, um, uh, I suggest that we consider this uh, side event as another step uh, uh, towards uh, deeper collaboration, uh, creation of uh, new cooperation formats and platforms for experience exchange. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, uh, have a nice day. Uh, thank you.